Claire, what are you doing? What's on the racket for? Hey, let's say hello. I think the stream is working. Oh, not even now. So clumsy. Lyra, what are you doing? Let's continue with painting. I think the stream looks good. Oh yeah, that's all fine, that's working. What what's happened? Hello. You just want attention, don't you? No, no, don't knock the arm. They would behave. Stop knocking the camera arm. Come on. Behave. Yeah, do you want to sit in my lap? Behave. Good girl. <laughs> right, I need a paintbrush. Uh, she does. I need to check my reference photos. So that needs a little bit more violet on it. These need a lot darker colours, I think. And we could do some dry brushing as well, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to need some paintbrushes. Yeah. yeah, let's try and move my size full brush. Hello. You being a pain. <laughs> let's try dry brushing some colour in. <laughs> Do you want to help? Is that right? You like that, don't you? Yeah. You're going to be good. Yeah, you are. Your ear is inside out. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ja. <lacht> Ich bin okay. <lacht> yeah, that's my shoulder. I think I need some more paint. Where's a paintbrush to mix some paint? Oh, oh hey Paolo, how are things? Let's mix some more paint up because I don't have an awful lot of paint there. Let's get some nice strong paint going in for these dry brushing. Well, that's the wrong jar. Bit of violet in the mix. And I'm going to want some strong red and brown. Lyra, come here. Come here. Go with red brown because it's a reddish brown. Lyra, come here. I'm going to need some darker brown as well. Hey! Oh, that's not Lyra, that's Loki. Hold on. Let me go sort that out. This will be the paint. Whoops. In. Come on in. In or out. Be quiet. I just opened the door to let him in, he just sat there looking at me, even though he was whinging to come in. That's a good amount of paint, let's give that a go. Oh, dude, did painting some lemons, that sounds cool. I do need to paint more um, fruit and veg, I think. One subject that I don't paint a lot of in botanicals, which are a popular subject. A lot of people like to paint fruit and veg, and I just don't really. <laughs> I tend to prefer to paint botanicals, but the other week somebody suggested painting a onion, so here we are. <laughs> So I'm just adding in some of the fine lines and details with some dry brushing. What are you two doing? Of course it's really difficult sometimes to dry brush on cold pressed paper because of the rough texture. Sometimes the lines the lines skip, so you kind of have to use a wetter a wetter mix of paint. To get a good um get some good lines going on. Yeah, I will admit as well that it's not that I'm lacking motivation to paint. I find that I'm lacking time to paint. Because the paint making takes up so much of my time. And making YouTube videos takes up so much time. I sometimes struggle to find time to actually just paint a subject. Hey, out from under that. Oh, this is why I don't let you in here. Behave. Hey. 
I'm hoping to get this done today. That's why I really enjoy these live streams. It sometimes gives me that time to paint. Like or doing things like this, it kind of forces me to do something and create a, and create a piece. Whereas when I'm not live streaming, I tend to focus on paint making or anything to do with that because it kind of brings in the money. Um, not to sound money orientated, but obviously it helps pay for things like doing art stuff. So it's quite important. And then obviously I do YouTube videos when I've got time around that. And then I'll focus on actual painting. I want to change that up. I want to try and focus more on my painting rather than my paint making for a change. Because I want to start trying to do, take commissions for paintings and actually making money off of my artwork. It's not an easy thing to do. What are you two doing? It's like having two small children, it really is. <laughs> I think I'm gonna need a lot more paint. I'm running out of paint quite quickly. Let's just grab lots of paint there. Your high painting hiding, how are, how are things? I'm glad you're liking it. Yeah, that's the dry brushing technique. You, it, it does make things look a little bit like colored pencil sometimes. You have to be careful not to overdo it because then the entire piece can look like colored pencil. Which is fine if that's what you want, but if you're painting with watercolor paints, and you want it to look like coloured pencil, you might as well just use coloured pencils. Loki, okay, what are you playing with now? Wait. Red ochre. <laughs> it's the wrong colour. Let's just trim more of this Van Dyke brown. Get a nice reddish brown going. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> it's a nice onion colour. Oh, it's water cotton. I'm umming and ahhing whether or not to set up a travel palette. I'm on vacation this week and I'm not sure whether I'm going to do it or not. The travel palette. I'm not sure if I have time to actually paint while I'm on holiday. Whoa, steady on. Look at your turn and paint. Hold on. Are you setting a, pal a travel palette painting anything in particular? Or are you just looking for a good all rounded palette? Yes, that's some good dry brushing. <laughs> that's the dry brushing we want. Nice, uh, good lines. Well, I'm very careful you can get yourself covered in paint. And I won't be impressed either because you'll get paint everywhere. Careful, so it's standing the painting. Mm, good girl. Where is he and what's he doing? I can't see him. Which is kind of a problem because he's really naughty. You don't keep an eye on him, he'll be doing so naughty. Like the other day, I wasn't keeping an eye on him, and he just uh, started peeing everywhere. So, 
So you want to build a pot palette using modern pigments. You like using fellow blue and red and blue, red and green shade. Oh, that could. Depending on if you're doing half patterns or full patterns, you could always do a split pan. So you could always put red shade on one side of the pan and green shade on the other. What? Come here. Ready? Come here. Lyra. She's having a mad five minutes. I have no idea why. Let's try and darken some of the big lines. And then I'm going to leave it to dry because I'm going to want to do another glaze on top to just kind of meld it all together and make it look good. So let's try and do... some darker lines. Some nice dark lines there. I can't quite see it. It's really nice have, um, watching it on stream because you can see everything. <laughs> you can see what it looks like when you zoomed out. Wonderful. Um, so I'm going to need to put more violet on the top of that one. It's fine. Um, ah, so you're using the double wins and you can. You're using the Windsor and Newton palette that has a bottle. Oh, I've seen that one. I've got that one. It's, it's not a bad travel palette. At least I don't think it is. Other people might disagree. <laughs> I mean, it's not the best travel palette out there um, because it's not fantastic quality, but I kind of like it. I really want the Schmincke one, but the Schmincke one is, whoa, very expensive. Hello. You want an escape? <laughs> Careful. They're very childlike. <laughs> Definitely can say that about them. <laughs> Loki's very naughty, like a misbehaving child. And Lyra's really delicate. And kind of needs mothering a bit. Going to do some dry brushing on the green leaves, and then we're going to then we're going to try and leave that to dry. And I'll come over and do some more um, washes. Are you just going to stand there, looking all cute? No. You're going to purr. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna sit on my lap and be good. Good girl. You behave. Um, put your tail right in the middle of the painting. <laughs> well, they're not such kittens anymore, they're adults, but yeah. <laughs> they, they've grown up a bit, but they still got a little bit more to go, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Come here. But it's difficult because they're house cats, they don't really get the chance to um, socialise so much with other cats that don't live with them. So sometimes they don't know how to behave or they're a bit whiny or they just whinge over nothing. Like now, she's whinging over nothing. Um, what do we do? 
I need a, a light yellow, perm yellow deep, which is a bit of that. A bit of warmth. I'm going to go with a tiny bit of red. Just to knock the green back. You could have a bit more blue actually in that. Prussian blue. Let's go a bit darker. Lyra, what's up? Come here then. Take a bit of that pink mixture. I think I'm happy with that green. I don't think you can quite see it on a stream. So it's just slightly out of shot. What are you whinging for now? Come here. Hey, so crying. Yeah, good girl. Behave. Where's my paintbrush? I had a size two paintbrush. There. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, you tell me about your day. Hiding under the city. Oh, this isn't going to splay, is it? Let's see if I can add some. Perhaps I'm going to have to switch back to. Yeah, I'm going to have to switch to a size 4. That's not going to. Dry brush frame up. Lyra, what's up? Silence. <laughs> My partner's just come home, so <laughs> they're both being suspicious about the noise. And Lyra doesn't like people other than me, so. She's getting very nervous. What are you doing? What? Loki. in the place like a playground, aren't you? Lyra, what? Come here, be good, behave. <laughs> right, so I need some dark purple for the top of the onion. Let's use the colour violet, which is just called violet, <laughs> which is very well described. <laughs> oh, I box of paint. Oh, in London. Well, um, take you to London for the day. Can't remember the last time I went to London. It's been a few years. Yeah, very much so. They know that I'm doing things. <laughs> but I wanted to keep Lyra in here because she doesn't like other people and she hides from my partner who visits at the weekends because my partner doesn't live here full time. Um, she's obviously not used to other people. So... So I want to keep her separate to see if she can 
what she'll have to do. Like she'll have to go past my partner to go into her hiding spot. Um, if she wants to go and hide, so she's got to be brave. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to get her to do more. Try and be a bit more braver. I definitely think I would like to do a trip to London again at some point. For me, I feel Lon like London's like that really, like that distant relative that you used to get on with really well. Like you kind of want to visit and kind of catch up every now and then. But, cause you, but you don't want to like spend too much time there because <laughs> it's too much, it's too crazy. And that is for me London. Like I enjoy visiting London every now and then, every couple of years, to kind of get my feel of like a big city feel and the London craziness. But I couldn't do it too much because it's very, very. It's got. It's, it's just very. It's a lot. It's intense. London is, is intense. I think is the way I would describe London. It's unlike anywhere else in the UK. Like, that's it for me. Being native here is one of the, my pet peeves for international travellers. More so, not to finger point, but more so um, American travellers tend to think that the UK is just London and that everywhere in the UK is like London. And they think London is a very British and very English, when in fact it really is neither. London is very far from being British, if I'm being honest. Hmm, how's that looking? I need some yellow at the bottom. I need some violet on here. Oh, and this is virgin paper, so it's a bit rough. Hello. You can say hello. Me being brave. <laughs> You're gonna just sit on my lap. Okay. Sit on my lap and be good. Good girl. So I need to do these roots as well. There are some roots I painted on. So they're kind of like a yellow ochre brown sludge colour. I guess I would describe it as. <laughs> yeah, it's quite... London is intense. <laughs> There's just everything in London. Everything's open all the time. It doesn't stop. Um, it's nice to dip into it when you want that kind of feeling and you want to go everywhere you want to see like lots of shops lots of sites lots of culture all at once but that's the thing with London it is all at once there's no kind of quiet there's no kind of chill in London you, like I, I've never been to London and felt relaxed in London because it always feels very fast paced and very all at once and very intense but yeah I agree with box painting it's, it's great to go to it's nice to go to for a shop, but it's nice to come home. <laughs> and especially for me to sit because I don't really like my town. But I'm excited to go to Edinburgh next week. That's what I'm excited for. Like, if there's anybody listening that wants a more English day than London, you can get it. And I recommend other places, not London. <laughs> if you want a good English city that's not too crazy, I would recommend like Bristol or Birmingham, maybe. Bath is also really nice. I like Bath, but it's not got masses of choice in shops. It's kind of more pretty. And then there's Cardiff is pretty good as well. If you don't mind Welsh people, <laughs> Cardiff is alright. 
and then yeah so there are obviously big towns and bits throughout the UK but yeah if you're looking down south in England Bristol's probably a good bet or Cardiff Looking outside, I would probably recommend Edinburgh. It's a really good city to go to. Trying to get... It's a bit purple too, because it's a bit too yellow. That's better. That's the colour I want. I've got my colour mixing then for a minute. Oh, here's a pain. Behave. Big lump. Uh, I agree, there are a few things I miss about living in London. Accessibility shops is a top list. Yeah, it's all very accessible, which is what I like about London. Like you can go anywhere, any time of night, or any kind of reason, or anything you want to look for, you can find it in London. If you're looking for like a quirky shop or anything like that, you'll find it there. But yeah, it's a very, it's a lot to take in. Um, we're going for a vacation. Um, we planned it quite a long time ago. We actually planned this for last year. Um, in Edinburgh. But obviously due to COVID, it got, we didn't actually book anything in the end because it just all got cancelled. So we didn't book anything because, yeah, 2020. Um, so we're going there this year. I feel like it's safe enough to do so, like, our death rate's getting low. I've been vaccinated, now I've had my first vaccination this week. So I feel like now's a time where it's a bit safer to go on holiday in the UK. Even though our cases are rising, I think we have picked the right time before our cases rise too much. Um, Bath is great if you like do the last case. Need much. Yeah, like I like Bath to go around because it feels nice to go around. I probably prefer Bristol for shopping, like in terms of what shops they have. But I prefer Bath overall because it's just a bit nicer to look around. Oh, I feel it's a little bit nicer to look around. It feels more chilled. Bristol's a very new age and it's very, a bit more fast paced than Bath. I feel that they're. I wouldn't say London flavour to it, but there's like that kind of city life feel to Bristol. You don't get in Bath. Brist Bath feels like a large town, whereas Bristol feels like a city. That's kind of why I like Edinburgh. Like, even though it's a city, it doesn't feel like one. It feels quite chilled and quite relaxed. And outside like the real touristy shopping streets, it's not too busy. It's not too crazy. So you can take it at a slower pace, which is what I like. Like it's a good mooching city, city that you can just kind of walk and wander through Edinburgh and find hidden gems and kind of nice bits. You don't have to rush while doing it either. Like if you wanted to do that through London, you'd have to rush a bit more. And it'd be a bit more difficult to see because it's so busy and you have to keep up with the London traffic or take public transport and it's always congested. I really want to go to the Jackson's store in in London because I know it's huge. They've got a big store there. Last time I was there I was going to go but it was closed on the Sunday that I was there. Because I think we went a Easter time, I want to say. Because we went there on the Saturday. And that was all fine, but I ran out of time on Saturday to do it all. And then it was closed on the Sunday because it was Easter. And a lot of things were closed on Easter Sunday. Yeah, you definitely need to drag him to Scotland. I love it. I am dragging my other half up. Well, my other half wants to go. <laughs> so it's not so much dragging, but... Yeah, we're going up. And then maybe next year, if it's safe enough, we might do an international holiday. We both have um, big birthdays coming up that we would be good to do something big for and celebrate it in some style. <laughs> 
But who knows, perhaps it'll be another Scotland holiday next year again. <laughs> I think we're also going to try and plan a day trip out of somewhere to either one of the other cities, either Glasgow or Stirling or Falkirk maybe. I've never been to Falkirk or Stirling, so I don't know what's there. I went to Glasgow once, and that wasn't too bad. What's that racket for? What? Oh no, so you're only 20 minutes from Cornell since I'm fighting the temptation to go in. Yeah, I've been to Cornell since it's a really nice shop to go into. Not so great at actually shopping wise because it's quite small and quite crowded. Um, oh crap. Um, so I will find, always find um, a difficult shop in there at the time I did go in because everything's all in drawers and packed away, so you kind of have to open it up and peek in it, which I felt a bit awkward doing. Um, last time I was there, I actually bought a couple of jars of manganese blue. Oh uh, yeah, because it's uh, I'm still working on the engine because it's taking um, quite a bit of time to do well. Yeah, come sit on my lap, good girl. Uh, so your husband's interested in going to Scotland, but does the British, if it's more than 20 minutes away, we need to plan massive plan. <laughs> I'm not quite that bad. For me, it's an hour mark. Anything that's more than an hour away, I'd have to plan. <laughs> Anything under around an hour-ish, I'm good. Like, um, Cardiff is about an hour and 40 away from me, but I wouldn't plan Cardiff. I would just do it like a day trip. Obviously, I would probably plan to get up a bit earlier so that we're not late, but uh, day trip. <laughs> oh my god. I'm going to have to turn on my face cam because she's being really cute. I'm really sorry, but I look a real mess because we're going on vacation. I kind of put all my... um doing like a big wash today, so I've not got any good clothes on. And I look a mess, so you'll have to excuse the state. <laughs> but she's literally... Grasping onto me. Let's move that down a little bit. She's literally sat on me like this. Yeah. Oh my god, my hair is bloody awful. <laughs> Different side, that side. Yeah, you comfy. She is very clingy to me. She definitely loves me very much. <laughs> More steady. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna miss her very much when I have to leave her for a week. Um. By the way, do you know if cadmium red is granulating? It is not granulating. It's a non-granulating paint. But it is very opaque though. So if you do a very thick wash of cadmium red and add loads of water to it, it will kind of split and cauliflower a bit and kind of have a texture to it. Because it's so thick and granulating, it's a bit like gouache in the way it behaves. Oh, I'm not start recording again. Whoops. Uh, we used to do Austin to Dallas and Mav for lunch, and it was 3.5 hours each way. So literally, this is where I start to think it's a big, it's a big trip. 
Three point five pounds. Wow, that's that's quite far. I wouldn't. Um, I don't think I'd do that for a lunch trip. <laughs> Um, you've been looking for granulating red, magenta, or pink. Yeah, the cadmium red is not granulating. It's kind of, it does have an effect with water if you do it too thickly and add lots of water to it. That's more cauliflowering rather than granulating. Um, I think you're going to be out of luck with the red, magenta, or pink being granulating. The only ones I found that are granulating are a zircon red. Um, or... Maybe, yeah, like a manganese violet, like Box Paint was saying, it's a kind of a purpley pink. There are a couple of mineral stones, like Fulet, which is granulating, but it's a very soft pink. There's not really a good, strong red or um, magenta that's granulating on its own. You might be able to find some luck if you were to um, maybe mix a magenta. So, you know, if you mix the magenta with a really granulating blue, like cerulean blue or cobalt blue, you might get a good granulating magenta. But there's not a single pigment out there that's going to do it. <laughs> I can't get over how cute you're being. <laughs> right, so let's do some washes. This is where I'm going to really mess it up. Let's really water down these mixes because I don't want to cover up all of those lines I've done. So really watery. Where's my size four? Let's get a nice bit of this paint. I'll try and. Brush this over and I'll blend out towards the highlight. So I'm doing this just to make those dry brushing that we did blend into the actual onion. If I didn't do this, the, the dry brushing would be quite harsh and it would look a lot like pencil. Whereas this just incorporates the dry brush into it, making it look it's like it's part of the onion itself. Which is kind of what we want. We want a watercolour painting, not a coloured pencil piece. If I was going to make it look like a coloured pencil piece, I would have done it with coloured pencils. So... Blend this in because obviously, I, as well, I'm also doing it to knock the highlight back a bit because the highlight was quite harsh. I don't want the highlight to be that harsh. Hello. <laughs> um, will this be the first time the kittens are alone for longer than work? Yeah, because obviously, they get left alone during the day from half past eight roughly till probably six, seven pm in the day, but I'm always home in the evenings and they're in the mornings. So this will be the first time they're going to be left alone longer than probably about 12 hours. So yeah, I mean my dad is going to be babysitting so he'll be coming in the morning to feed them and in the evenings. Um, and he also needs to feed the rats. But Loki's fine, like Loki doesn't mind about people, he's into everybody, he's into everything. But Lyra is petrified of other people. I mean my partner comes around every single weekend and she still isn't used to somebody else but me. So she will hide from my dad, 100%. So she won't have any human contact for a week, which is sad. And I think she might struggle a little bit because she is very attached to me. I mean, you can see already that she's not leaving me alone. <laughs> You're a daddy's girl, aren't you? <laughs> Let's go lemon yellow. 
freshen the screen up a bit. Then we're going to do the same with some green. I'm sure they'll be fine, like my parents have cats and they're used to looking after cats, so it's not that they're going to be scared to look after them. I think he's scared about looking after the rats. <laughs> he's coming over tomorrow to learn how they're fed. And learn some of their routine. <laughs> Like, I don't think Loki will notice any difference. He might be really clingy when I get back, but he's not going to notice much difference. He's more independent and more, yeah, independent in a way. Like, he's very clingy and he likes to have people around. But he's not constantly pestering me for attention. He has his moments, but... He's not that bad with like attention or seeking sometimes. Where she definitely is very much like that. When she if she's not hiding, it's normal day, it's me and her. She's either chilling in her hammock because she loves her hammock. Or she is chilling with me because she's clingy. <laughs> I'm not really sure what the best way is to go about trying to get her more used to people. Like I don't know if forcing her to interact with people is the way to go. Like show her in her room and then get loads of people to, well, as many people who are as safe as possible. So I eat my parents <laughs> to be shown in her room with her where she can hide or whether that's not a good thing to do. We have done that occasionally because like when she needed um, her meds doing when she was spayed, I had to have help with it because obviously she needed pinning down to get her meds to her. But I don't want to make a habit of Forcing her to interact with people. <laughs> but she does need to do it because if, like when she went to the vets after her spay appointment, after she was spayed and done and fixed, um, she went to the vets for a checkup and her temperature was very high because she doesn't like people, so it sent her temperature crazy because she was very stressed out. So the vets thought that she had an infection and gave her antibiotics because her temperature was so high and because she was freaking out. But with me, she's fine. So you're saying it's a bad idea to stick her in a room with people? I have tried um, a plug-in, a fellow a Feliway plug, but that didn't really do anything. How's that looking? It's looking all right, to be fair. 
Hmm, where's my other one? I feel this needs maybe some more work. There's kind of a weird dark line there. There's a weird dark line just here. Let's try and sweep that. So it's not quite so harsh. Even though I might have just made it worse. <laughs> Those pug looking to pairs, oh no. It took my mother Lord cat about five years before they started coming out when we were over. And now they are all over you. So I'm just doing things at their own pace. Based on experience. So according to Kevin, based on his experience, cat doesn't like aggressive approach. Maybe having other people around until she gets used to humans is a better approach. Yeah, I'm hoping that hopefully when my partner does move in that she'll be able to get a bit more settled because it's another person. Uh, because obviously where we've had COVID, we haven't had like, I haven't had a lot of people around. Like when I first got them, we were still under a official lockdown. So I was only allowed to have bubbled up with one household because I'm a single adult. So I was able to have a support bubble with one of the households. So I chose my partner. So it's just been me and my partner for a few months. And then in the last month or so, my parents have come around a little bit more but because of that she's not used to lots of people so hopefully as lockdown well as covid is easing we can get a bit more more people see i can't bribe her with food either because she's not really a foodie she's not into her food she likes food, but she's not super into it. Like when I'm eating dinner in the front room, in the living room, and she's around, she's not bothered by what's on my plate. She literally wants me to move the plate so she can have a cuddle. That's what she's more interested in than the actual food. So food is not gonna be the way to win her over. <laughs> It might just have to be a sort of see how things go, I think. There seems to be a few bits here. Where's this smudge come from? Mm, this paint seems to be lifting quite well, which is good if you like lifting paints. I haven't spoken to Otto yet, Otto, yeah, about Scotland either yet. I think because I've not read really any of Ev's streams lately. I know that Otto's been super busy. She's just moved house. So, oh, it's about rain around 3 pm. Wonderful. Hello. <laughs> She's at my feet. <laughs> just sat there. <laughs> This is how clingy she is. She has a whole room to go sit in and hide in. And she sat at my feet. And she's done that before as well when we had to do her meds. Um, obviously we sort of left her, sort of let her down on the floor after we did them to see, make sure that she was okay and she wasn't having any reaction to it. And she, my mum was obviously in the room and she hid behind me <laughs> and she hid behind my legs. Good girl. <laughs> She's now purring. <laughs> right, let's add some more detail onto those roots. I think we are coming towards the end of this now. I think I'm just tidying up some of the details. I think I'm actually getting close to calling it done. Let's try and do that route. 
bit darker. I've not enjoyed this paper so much though. <laughs> I think this paper would be great if you're really into rough work. But I'm not enjoying it so much. My chair is really squeaky. <laughs> right, so I need to put some yellow, don't I, on this? Do it here. Some yellow on the root. So let's see if I can find a bit of a warm yellow. Make it really thin because there's not a whole lot of yellow on the root. It's just a tiny bit. Yeah, see how that settles. Um, so box paint says, I don't think I appreciated how beautiful onions are until I grew some from a seed. And the alums have the best flowers. Flat and the alums have the best flowers. Oh. See, I would grow onions from a seed, but I don't really like onions. I'm okay with red onions in some things, but I'm not a huge fan of them. Hmm. Let's try and tidy up some of these green bits. Um, paintbrush. <laughs> yeah, it's been really interesting using this. Um, watercolour set that Gabor gifted me. Definitely has some colours that I wouldn't really use myself, so it's definitely good to be good to play with it. It's just a shame about the colours not being light fast, a lot of them. If the colours were more light fast, I think this set would definitely be a really good set to use. But yeah, sadly they're not so light fast. You can't live with onions or garlic. Can't live without onions or garlic. I like garlic in sometimes. Sometimes it can be a bit strong, so I've got to be careful with it, but yeah, I'm not a fan of onions. <laughs> I could quite easily live without them. <laughs> I'm definitely getting more tolerable with onions, but I could still quite easily do without them. <laughs> it's just they're quite a strong taste, I find. Which is really, it's really odd because I really like pickled onions. Like I could eat them by the jar quite easily. But onions in general, I can quite easily omit from recipes, and I quite often do omit onions from re recipes because I don't like them. <laughs> this week I actually got a Gusto box. Um, for those who don't know, Gusto is a bit like HelloFresh. It's kind of like a food subscription box where all your ingredients come in the box and you get recipe cards and you kind of make the meals from the recipes and that's been really fun to do this week but that's included a few vegetables I'm not so keen on but I had to eat it because I didn't have any other food <laughs> and to be fair it was actually pretty tasty
I also use a lot of garlic. I'm okay with garlic. Every now and then it's just sort of, you know, the right amount of garlic. And sometimes if I use too, garlic too much too often, I get fed up with the taste. Because obviously it can lead, obviously it builds up. You can kind of get that taste in your mouth of garlic if you have too much of it. Which is not pleasant because it's quite acidic. Mm. But yeah, it's nice in moderation. <laughs> you purring again? I think it's really difficult to plan what I'm doing because the image is flipped. So I'm looking, thinking, oh, this bit looks a bit like when actually it's like the other side that looks a bit like. <laughs> um, that bit there, do a bit more colour. I think. I'm trying to be really careful with this paint because it can lift easy, so doing very thin washes and literally just flicking it a little bit. If I keep going, if I keep going over with my brush, it will lift the paint, which I don't want to do. Yep. Good girl. <laughs> I get a picture of that. Let's have a look. Hello. <laughs> oh, such a squeaky chair. Um, right. Let's try and tidy up. Oh, my strong brush. I feel very out of it this week. <laughs> So you ordered a, all kinds of goodies, a barbecue yesterday, and they did it on food. Oh no! You got two packs of baby corn, cream cheese, and four eggplants. Oh no! That sounds like a very bad um, wrong order. <laughs> very odd combo, as well. And somewhere vegetarian got a bag of meat. Oh no, that's awful. <laughs> well, my parents are off to the US in August, and they're very nervous about food because they they don't eat meat. And obviously, where they're going in the US is um, Nashville, so it's down that kind of way, and they're all big meat eaters, and um, they're a little bit worried about what they're going to eat. I wouldn't be surprised if they came home and said they had to eat meat. Um, I think you can grill eggplant bits like in my other stuff how to. Yeah, eggplants are really versatile. You can grill it, you can roast it, you can do a lot with it. I 
The South is more difficult, but there will be veggie and vegan restaurants. Yeah, the problem is my dad can be quite thirsty and very nervous when it comes to new food. So, um, for example, you wouldn't really catch my dad eating at sort of unusual restaurants. Whenever he goes away in the UK, he tends to stick to like Weatherspoon and restaurants because he knows what the food is there. They can eat side dishes. <laughs> Be wary of soul food because of it. bacon grease is a staple. Oh no. I'll warn them. <laughs> yeah, be careful of um soul food. This cat she's now hugging my foot. I think it's safe to say that she is clingy. <laughs> Yeah, the US is not really on my bucket list of places to go to. For me personally, it's never been a interest. I'm sure it's got really nice places there, but it's kind of the not so nice things that I'm worried about because the not so nice things there can be really not pleasant. And it's very expensive and a very long way to go. And for someone that I'm not really that first on. I used to date an ex who had family over in the US and always wanted me to go over there and visit, but I always said no. <laughs> Not my thing. Um, your parents must have a hard time on vacation since they don't not going to enjoy local food. Um, sometimes it's not my parents in general. It's more my dad rather than my mum. My mum's really good with like exploring food and sort of trying different things as long as it's vegetarian. But my dad is a bit fussy when it comes to it. But he will do it sometimes, like he, when he used to eat meat, he tried haggis in Scotland. And he's eaten vegetarian haggis before as well. So he's getting better, but yeah. If he can find something that's in his comfort zone, he will go with his comfort zone rather than something new. Oh, thanks for stopping by, Pat. Um, enjoy the rest of your Sunday, and hopefully it goes well with your Pat. So your husband, so Boxpaint says his husband is a vegetarian and hates veggies, so it gets difficult. Oh, so get this also get the difficulties. Yeah, my dad's a bit like that. He's not such a big fan of vegetables. I'm a bit iffy on some vegetables. I'm a difficult vegetarian because there are things that I won't eat. Like, I don't like eggs, so I won't eat, like, scrambled egg or anything like that. Um, I do like vegetables, and we'll try a good range of vegetables. I'm not a fan of, like, boiled cauliflower. I don't really like cabbage. I don't like... I don't like, don't like onions. But I'm good with, like, the bulk of vegetables, like carrots, parsnips, sweets. Um, roasted cauliflower is pretty nice. What else can I think of? Um, aub aubergine or eggplant I'm good with, courgettes I'm good with. Um, yeah, I'm good with vegetables. And I'm good as well with plant-based food. Um, I'm not sure how my dad feels on plant-based food. But my dad wouldn't eat tofu. I recently actually got this week from Aldi. Um, they've got a new plant-based chicken chicken fillets they're in the frozen section so I got some of them to try so hopefully they'll be tasty I look forward to eating one of them when uh, I get back off vacation
Oh, hi, Tom Ford. Hello. Uh, you got PG-17 payment yesterday, and you made some more cut. It was amazing. Oh, PG-17, if memory serves me right. Is that Viridian Green? Or is that Chromium Oxide? I can't remember. Um, I love turnip. It's a bit iffy on Swede. You can't figure out why. Same thing. Yeah, I'm good with turnips, so but yeah. I get the whole Swede thing, though. Swede can be a bit of a strange texture, depending on who cooks it. Or how it's cooked. <laughs> right, I'm going to mix up some dark paint and give some get some really good dark shadows. I think at the bottom of this, I think. So, some Bordeaux, some red. I'm using quite a lot of the red in this palette. It's called, what's it called? Crimson Lake, I think it's called. I'm using quite a lot of that one. And I'm using quite a lot of the colour Bordeaux, I'm finding as well. Oops, that's the wrong jar. So yeah, this set does contain some really good colours. Uh, that's when I get confused between the two. So PG-17 is chromium oxide. It's a colour that not a lot of people like in botanicals. So, um, not in botanicals. But it's a colour that a lot of people don't like in um, watercolour paint. So power to you if you like it. I wonder if Cyan is streaming today. Usually she's in the live chat and won't be able to tap me, but I'm guessing she's busy this afternoon. I'll check on her channel in a bit, see if she is streaming. Um, I've been wondering if I need a free grain later, but since my palette already contains it's yellow ochre, cobalt turquoise, ultramarine, and Venetian red. Um, you probably don't need a granulating red, as I said, they're near enough impossible to find. I've only found the one granulating red, and that's Zircon red. And even then, it's not really a very strong red. The only other way you can get a granulating red is if you try maybe a granulation medium or if you mix like a, a really granulating earth colour or blue in with the red. But you've got to be careful because if you add too much to that colour, it will take away from the red. It might make it purple. Hey Cyan, we were just talking about you. <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> we were wondering if you were streaming today. How are things? How's uh, Ruka? No, I don't want to cut them. The 
Let's put my face cam on again and I can look really bad on camera again. <laughs> Let's move that down. Say hello. Her in a way. Ah, so sign is streaming today. Cool. Um, you were running and calling back home. She's in good shape. Oh no. Rook has been on white fluffy rugs since it's too hot for me. Has it been hot in Finland this week? We've had some really bad weather this week. It's not been so nice and sunny. Oh, is that nice? You like chip rubs? Just sit on my lap. Look pretty. You're gonna fall in a minute if you're not careful. She's literally hanging off my lap because she sort of left her bottom legs and bottom half of her to dangle in between my legs and kind of just hang. She's just hanging there off my off my lap. <laughs> Good girl. So let's do a few more lines. I think. A few more fine lines on this painting and I think we're nearly done. I just want to increase some of these lines. This is where I mess it up as well. This is another thing you can do if you've got a brush that won't display nicely or you want to have more control, you can draw fine lines for dry brushing, one by one. It's definitely something that takes practice though. The, the needs practice because um, it can go wrong so easily. You have to be really delicate with it. Because it's easy to overdo it and get the lines too thick. Can be really therapeutic to do. Drawing fine lines on everything. <laughs> but yeah. I would practice this on some scrap of paper. Practice. The best way I find to do it is to use your wrist, so keep so locking your wrist and just move your arm rather than, you know, do this. So keep lock your wrist in and just move your arm. It's the best way to get the fine lines. You have to be so delicate as well, barely touching the paper. Are you feeling brave? 
Who knows? <laughs> And Loki sat in a corner of the other corner of the room on the floor. Spread out. <laughs> oh, she's now sat on my foot. <laughs> Let's try and tidy up this bit. But yeah, I need to start to think about what I'm going to do in the next stream, which won't be next week because of, I'm on vacation. <laughs> I definitely do not have the space in my luggage to take all my streaming equipment away with me. <laughs> that alone, I probably won't have good Wi-Fi because it's an Airbnb property, so they will have very basic Wi-Fi. Definitely would not be good enough for a stream. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it, next stream maybe to do some paint making or to do more painting maybe. I'm not sure. If anybody's got any suggestions or anything they want to see, uh, let me know. I could probably try and uh, work it in. But yeah. Got a very busy couple of days before vacation. <laughs> I need to get everything ready, we need to get everything packed. Which we're doing Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. And then I also have to do a load of paint stuff, so I need to send out this month's Patreon rewards. I need to schedule a few videos, I need to put some content up on Patreon while I'm away and do all that sort of stuff. I'm very busy. <laughs> and on top of that, I also have my day job to go to for two days. <laughs> so I'm super, super busy. I'm gonna try and do some of that tonight. Hopefully I can send out the Patreon rewards tomorrow. If not, I'm going to have to take them with me and post them on a minute while I'm in Edinburgh. I have done that before actually. I, I sent a car when I was visited Otto. I did send out, a, I think it might have been either an order or it might have been something to Ev actually. But I sent out something out when I, while I was in Edinburgh. So I took the parcel with me. Sent out while it was up there. <laughs> this definitely looking like an onion, which is good. <laughs> Just what I wanted. <laughs> Um, sign up question, is it possible to ship outside the UK now? Yeah, it's been possible for quite a while. Like I've sent stuff to the US, like I did a paint sale. When was that? Very recently. It was this month, it must have been about two weeks ago. Yeah, it was the 11th. And I shipped paint out to all over. I sent it to Europe, to the US, to Japan. And people have got their own parcels. Same with the Patreon rewards, they're all arriving. I think it might be a little bit slow, like sending overseas, but it is getting there. I know that in-house shipping has also been a bit slow, like me receiving things through the post has been slow. image on stream is not a great image. It looks so different on my camera. So this will be like a full proper video up on YouTube at some point. Um, 
it's worth a watch even if you have watched both the live streams because um you'll see what this really looks like in really good detail um i'm getting some dry payment pb29 and py53 in the mail tomorrow i'm going to possibly add in a pr101 and pg17 as a four color palette wow that's an interesting color palette I'm not a big fan of PY53 because it's um, fugitive. I think it depends on where you're getting it from, so it can be quite expensive. Let's try and tidy up the greens a little bit. Let's try and do a few lines on these. Yeah, I think UK, um, international shipping has been fine for a while now. I know we had a few problems, I think, just after Christmas and at the beginning of the year when we left the EU. And the whole customs thing was a bit of a joke. And I know there was problems getting into Europe because of the whole drivers being stuck at the borders. And then they had the prop they were really tight with the customs labels. And I am being really careful now with my customs labels and filling in if it's, you know, sale of commercial goods, which a lot of my parcels are. I still just put um there's one item in the in the thing and just put the collective weight and price of it because otherwise it'd be too much effort to list everybody, every individual item of pat of pans of paint. So I don't bother with that. I do as well send all my Patreon ones as a gift items because they are technically a gift. They're not a sale of commercial goods, like people sign up to my Patreon and it's a reward, so it's a gift. So that's what I do with Patreon rewards. And PY3 is actually very light fast. And lime and cement stable. It's called nickel titanium. You know. uh, I might be thinking of um, Aurelin, actually. That's the one I'm thinking of. Aurelin is um, the one I'm thinking of. I can't remember the pig on it off the top of my head because I don't use it very often. Is it PY49 maybe? Yeah, I think I remember PY53. I think I've got it in my Windsor and Newton travel palette. It's very opaque, very kind of chalky. It's a very strong in yellow. Hmm. Let's do a bit more tidying. This is kind of the not very exciting bit of the process because it's pretty much finished. It's just kind of tweaking and tidying up edges and Unfortunately, this paper is not the best paper, and it's cold pressed paper, which I'm not usually used to. So, getting a good crisp edge is um, a challenge, <laughs> if not impossible. <laughs> I need to be careful that I don't add too much around the edge because it will be too obvious what I've done. <laughs> it'll look like an outline which I don't want to do.
Luckily, the camera hides a lot of the rough outline. <laughs> it's just not viewable even on my proper camera, my DSLR camera. It doesn't really show. So let's see if I can do some more. I never realised how detailed you could be with an onion before. <laughs> That's always a thing though, whenever you paint a subject, you have to get very up close and personal with the object and very meticulous about it. To the point of obsession level kind of study. I, I was thinking that when I, you have to like paint someone's face, you have to kind of get stalker level when it comes to looking for reference images and then actually painting it because you have to get very detailed <laughs> like it could be really closely studying for example the shape of somebody's nostril obviously you'll have to get, zoom in on an image for it and get really close and get you know go over it lots of times and That's happening with the latest portrait that I'm going to do. I'm getting very stalkerish with it and I've only literally just been searching reference images at the minute. <laughs> and I've done the sketch. Well, worse, but I'm halfway through the sketch. But yeah, it's a bit stalkery. <laughs> um, also, have you ever used Crema's version of PBR24? It's more like the orange version of Naple Jello. I don't think I've used it, no. PBR24. I'm struggling to remember what that pigment number it, pigment is. I'm not doing very good at remembering my pigments. Normally I'm really good at remembering pigment numbers, but... I may have to scope out, scope out some art shops as well, like in Edinburgh. They have a couple, however most of them are very expensive and not that great. I think there's only one of them that was reasonably priced. So I'm going to scope out to see if I can find any discontinued paints like from Windsor and Newton. But yeah, I think Edinburgh is definitely in need of a good art shop. Because most of the art shops I did come across when I was up there before were super tiny. Like there's one literally right outside Grey Friars Bobby which is like a big famous uh, dog scat statue in Edinburgh. And it's tiny and very, very expensive. I remember Otto was saying that she very rarely buys anything local in terms of art supplies because of the price of everything. Said that she's bought some, some stuff from the cheaper art shop because the staff in there are really nice and it is a bit more reasonably priced. It's still cheaper to get it online, but it's not horrendously more expensive to buy it there from the shop. 
as opposed to Jackson, so if you're buying the odd thing, it's worth supporting the local business. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'll see if they've got any hidden gems. I doubt it. And I'm sure if they did have any hidden gems, Otto would have uh, beat me to it. Even though I don't think Spoon going out the last sweet year. This side, this side. So this side needs a bit more because it's a bit pale. Oh, being careful not to put my finger and my hand in the paint. Pure 48 is actually discontinued. It's not available in any major Eastern brands though. No, I think usually it's available from M. Graham, I think that I've seen it in. Um, I've not seen it in Sennelli A. Rembrandt might do it. De Schmincke do it. I'm pretty sure Windsor and Newton might also do it. <laughs> yeah, you just sit on my feet, it's fine. <laughs> Just felt this warm furry thing just collapse on my foot. <laughs> yeah, I think they stopped doing it. I don't know if Crema still do it. Let me have a look. Because I actually have some. But perhaps I will not be uh, making any more paint with it. Let me have a look on Crema. Can't remember what they called it now. P.O. P.O. 48. So they've got it in retouching. It's called a retouch. Which is P.O. 48. But that's it. That's the only thing that's coming up. So when I'm searching the normal, what it used to be called, it used to be called Synquasia. I think that's what they used to call it, or Shinacridone, I think they used to call it. No, they don't sell it at all. Completely discontinued. It's a shame because it is a really nice colour. So I won't be able to use any more of that because I have very small amounts of it. I mean, luckily it does go a very long way. So perhaps um, give it a couple months, I might make the paint again. So apparently Crow US carry it. Um, yeah, I think it's, as it's discontinued, I expect that brands will stop doing it. Um, I think the reason why the US Crema probably carries it was the same with the ultramarine green that I have, that was available. I think the the US um, Crema US had it available a lot longer than what Crema um, EU did. I think the reason is because there's not a whole lot of pigment manufacturers based in Europe. We've literally got like Crema Cornelissons. Um, there's a Dutch one, and obviously very small ones, but there's not very many. Whereas if you go to the US, there's lots of different pigment manufacturers. 
Um, so it might be that maybe Kremlin US don't have much, in much interest as some other stock stockists up there. And as well, it might be that they have smaller stock, maybe or smaller warehouse or smaller, I don't know, smaller interest maybe. Or perhaps it's more expensive than the EU. Perhaps they put more higher price on it because of the import. I don't know. But yeah, it is odd that the US one has it and the EU, EU one doesn't. I'll Google it, let's see if I can find. Because they've got a completely different website for it. The US is a completely different website. PO48. Nothing comes up when I search it. I search quinacridone. They've got pink, red, chestnut brown. But yeah, there's no PO48 on Crema US by the looks of it. I can try and find the number maybe so i've got a large part of it so they call it shinacridone so the number the catalog number two three five eight five assuming they use the same code yeah it's not coming up so i don't think they have it available in crema us And um, we would be a quinacridone trying to chemically, chemically produce it at home is out of the question. A quinacridone pigment is quite difficult to um, produce. I never produced one, so I wouldn't really know. Can I have my foot back? <laughs> uh, you would like to create your own version of PBR 11 manganese ferrite by calcium, calcium iron oxide with magnesium oxide. Oh, so I wouldn't know how to do that kind of thing. It's quite scientific and a bit out of my knowledge and do. I wouldn't even know where to start. <laughs> Right, I think we're pretty much done here. I think this painting's pretty much finished. Um, so for a quick recap, for those who don't know or are watching this later, um, I was sent this palette of, well, sent a set. I poured it into a palette, a set of colors from Shinhan. This is their professional line, so it's their student grade line. They're not artist quality, they're student quality. And this was sent to me by Gabor, um, very kindly. And yeah, so I poured the paints into a palette, we swatched them out in one live stream. And then in the last live stream I started painting this. And this is finished. So I'm really happy with it. This will be a full proper video at some point, so I will share my sort of more collective thoughts on it in the video. And you'll be able to see... Oh, where's that green can come from? You'll be able to see as well the image in a lot clearer and more detailed than the live stream because my camera is not brilliant for my live stream so you can see a more detailed image in the video and i'll definitely have more of a collected and more structural review of it but i like these paints um, i think it's a shame that the pigments aren't very light fast in most of the paints because it is a really nice set and it works really well and they feel really nice to paint with like um, people often compare Shinhan to Holbein paints, but really I don't find them very like I find Shinhan paints to be a lot nicer to play with. They feel a lot creamier and a lot richer. They're also a lot cheaper, which is a bonus. Um, as Holbein are super expensive to use. I also don't find them very pigmented Holbein paints. I find them quite really tinting. In, in comparison to in comparison to some. 
um, in, in comparison to some other brands. But no, I've really enjoyed, even though these are student paints, I've really enjoyed um, painting and using them. Like I found that they're really nice to use, they're really easy. There weren't really any problems when using them. I think the only thing I can think of is they do sometimes lift a little bit easier. But that may also be a bit of a problem because I'm using um, cellulose paper rather than cotton paper. So that might have had an effect on it. Um, but yeah, so far, these have gotten a thumbs up for me. I haven't looked up how much the set is yet. If you can find the set cheap enough, it's a set of 30 colours, if anybody's wondering. Um, if you can find the set cheap enough, I definitely recommend going for it. If you're after some cheaper paints. Um, if it's a really expensive, I probably wouldn't bother and I'd probably just invest in an artist grade set. Because they will be better off in the long run because they will be have light fast pigments, usually artist sets do. Whereas these are mostly not light fast, I think, when we were looking at the pigment information in the swatching video. But yeah, as I said, there will be no live stream next week because I'm on vacation and I won't be physically able to live stream. <laughs> so yeah, taking a week off. Oh, sorry, I'm just kicking the cat out of my slipper. <laughs> um, we'll be, I'll resume live streaming. What's the date gonna be? Let me have a look at my calendar. So next one should have been the fourth. I'm not gonna be here. It will be the 11th. So I'll be live streaming again on the 11th of July. So two whole weeks, um, but yeah, I will try and post some images of this up on my Patreon page if I can get a chance before I head off. So if you're a Patreon, you'll be able to see that. Um, I also try and put it maybe on Instagram at some point. But yeah, I hope you guys um, enjoyed watching it and sort of enjoy seeing a different paint brand and hope you enjoyed hanging out with me in the chat. It's always nice to have people here to hang out with. Um, if anybody's got any comments or anything they want to add, um, feel free to in the last couple of minutes. Um, make sure you check out the site and stream. She is streaming about an hour after me, uh, 5 p.m. GMT, um, British Summer Time, she streams. Or if you're in Europe, it'll be 6 p.m., depending on where in Europe you are. So yeah, definitely make sure you go check out the site and stream. I've also left links down in the description bar to my other mods. Um, Lana and Alex, who couldn't be here today, they're sometimes in the chat. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it guys, enjoy the rest of your Sunday and have a good week and I will see you all in two weeks. Um, stay safe, don't do anything that I wouldn't do and have fun. Bye everybody.